All right, everybody, this is Aaron Brightman from the Scarlet Faithful. Uh, minutes after Rutgers lost uh, 31 to nothing to Minnesota. Uh, I'm a little banged up today. I went running and uh, also I had a little bit of reaction to my eyes, so I look like uh, Sloth from uh, Goonies, so apologies for that. But uh, just pretty typical for, you know, how the game went. Um, you know, I don't know. I feel kind of weird after this game. I'm not as emotional about the loss. Obviously, I think a lot of Rutgers fans had hoped that Minnesota going there, you know, Rutgers had a chance after the way they played against Indiana. And then we all kind of got, you know, uh, walloped uh, before the game with the news that Samuel Brown's out for the season. Um, you know, I do think it was the type of thing. I mean, Shano said on Monday he thought he was going to be fine. Samuel Brown was walking after the game, said he was fine. Uh, obviously, something came up in, a, you know, a, an x-ray or whatnot. Um, you know, really depends on what the injury is. I mean, people have walked on severe injuries before. So, I mean, depending on the severity, obviously it could even impact, you know, the off season and, um, you know, the beginning of next year. So, uh, obviously concerning terrible news to start the day. Uh, then you get the surprise that Gavin Wimsat is starting. Um, I'm really glad he started. I, you know, it's going to be interesting to dissect, you know, did they think with Brown being out, okay, you know, I mean, they won't admit this, but <laughs> their chances were a lot less. Let's give Wims out the ball. It's time to develop him. Uh, you know, are they basically saying the bowl, bowl chances are over? Uh, or, you know, was it just a matter of they thought Wims out was ready? Uh, they wanted to give him an extra week in the new system. Um, either way, you know, I, I, I don't know how people are going to react to this. This is me right after the game. I kind of stayed off Twitter. Um, I was busy with my kids today and uh, while watching the game. And I just, you know, think that I thought he was OK. I really did. I thought he showed some poise. I mean, I think I think there were six drops in the game. Uh, I thought fundamentally he looked more sound. You know, I think he's still struggling with reading the defense. They've obviously made it very simple for him. It was really a one read call. Um, but I thought that he was kind of, you know, his 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 um, fundamentals, his uh, release he stayed in the pocket a lot. You know, I actually would have liked to seen him on rollouts more. Um, I was surprised they didn't do that. Maybe it is, you know, his injury coming into the game. He obviously left the game injured. Uh, just, you know, a nightmare scenario if he goes down for, you know, a significant period of time. So I don't know if they didn't run him as much and, and, and mobilize him on the outside uh, because of the injury he was already recovering from. But I was surprised how much he was in the pocket. But I actually thought he showed some poise. I, I, I really did. Um, he made some great throws that were dropped. I mean, that ball to Alimo, deep, was on the money. Um, you know, he missed a bad one to Langen early on a third down that would have extended a drive. Um, he missed some throws, but he also made some really good throws. And there's no question that the zip on his ball, um, you know, his release, I mean, he can, he can sling it. Um, He's going to take time, you know, and we, we said, I mean, you, you have to live with the ups and downs right now. Um, he had an interception. He had a fumble. Um, he was only 6 to 17. But really, I mean, if those drops come through, he's he's over 50, well over 50 percent. Uh, he would have thrown more like 60, 65 percent completion percentage, which is what you want. Um, you know, there was no run game. Uh, the offensive line, you know, I, I think the most disturbing thing for me in this game was how much Rutgers lost in the trenches to a Minnesota. You know, no disrespect to Minnesota. They're, you know, middle of the pack, right at the top half. They're, they're in the top half of the Big Ten, I'd say. You know, probably anywhere from, I don't know, five, six, seven, maybe. Uh, and, um, you know, they they bullied Rutgers, especially, the, the you know, the offensive line of Minnesota, the run game with Muhammad Ibrahim. Um, you know, to, to Rutgers' credit, I mean, he did average a, a yard and a half less per carry than his season average. He averages 5.9 yards a carry. He only averaged 4.4. He did get, you know, 156 yards, I think. He had three touchdowns. He controlled the game. I think it was that first drive, you know, it was 19 plays, 99 yards. It just took the wind out of the out of, out of Rutgers. Um, you know, and then the offense comes out. Uh, they, they weren't able to sustain a drive. Minnesota comes right back on the field, and then they put together a 13-play, 86-yard drive. Uh, and then you're down 14 nothing. It's, you know, I mean, that 19-play that drive was a quarter. It was like 14 minutes. The Rutgers defense was obviously winded. Um, they did get some stops after that, uh, and they did not make it easy for Ibrahim whatsoever. They got no offensive support. Um, but, you know, listen, I, I, I think it's a good defense. I don't think it's a great defense. Um, I think they're good. 
uh, I think that the biggest stat, which I didn't even realize until they said it, I mean, they've, uh, and I, I guess with the last drive too, was in the red zone. So uh, not, I think all four, uh, the one obviously on the interception on Vedral at the end, but I mean, they've given them every time an opponent's gotten in the red zone against them this year, they've scored a touchdown. Excuse me, they've scored. And I believe it was everyone but one was a touchdown. Uh, that's bad. So you're not a great defense if that's how you're defending the red zone. Um, but, you know, the defense, they, you know, they, 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 they did not have their best day. I think my concern is now going against Michigan. You know, they're just going to get destroyed against Michigan the way they did against Ohio State, you know, averaging seven and a half yards a carry. Um, so, you know, this is always the time of year as fans that we worry about the Rutgers defense getting worn down. Major concern right now, I'd say. Uh, we saw it today, full force, and now you got Michigan coming in. Uh, it's going to be tough. Uh, offensively, again, going back, Wimsett left the game. Did not, you know, it was a little bit scary there. I, I, I don't know. We'll have to see. But, uh, you know, I think at this point, you have to go all, all in on Wimsett. You got to let him play. You got to let him work through the mistakes. I think he has shown enough positives. I, people may grumble at that comment. I don't know. But I, I, I think he... You know, he made some good decisions today. He made some mistakes, but he needs experience. He's green as can be, uh, but the talent is there. His accuracy is, has been an issue, but I thought he was actually more accurate than not today. He got hurt by drops by his receivers. Uh, the tight ends to me were disappointing. Um, you know, Limo, Langan had, you know, had some drops too. Um, I, I don't know. I thought Nunzio uh, Campanile, uh, you know, game plan uh, was okay. Um, not a lot to work with. Uh, I think that offensive line again, you know, the thing with Sam Brown last week, I mean, 89 out of 101 yards, uh, contact, uh, after contact. So, you know, they don't have another back like that and you're not going to have a great back lot last long for that. And he, he lasted one game, <laughs> one game. I mean, he did have two games of 15 plus carries, but one game he used him as a workhorse and behind that offensive line, he's out for the season. So, um, listen, I don't want to destroy the offensive line, but, um, you know, I think they've kind of gotten a little bit of a pass lately. And, uh, you know, I think today was evident that, um, you know, they're, they're not they're not cutting it. Um, and I think, you know, if Wimsett is out for a significant period of time, the, 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 my biggest hope is now you go all in on Wimsett and you develop him and we see progress in this last month of the season. And we all can say, you know what? He's got potential. He's made some strides. He's our quarterback for 2023. And we're going to go into 2023 riding on Wimsett. And, you know, if he's hurt and he can't play the rest of the season, then that's going to be a, a big problem. Um, hopefully he can play next week. Hopefully he's, he's okay. We'll find out. Again, this is a rapid reaction. We don't know. So don't, you know, come in on Tuesday and comment that I didn't know what I was talking about. Uh, we're literally right after the game. So, you know, I know I'm rambling a bit. I, I think the rest of the season, you know, it's going to be a developmental thing. I, I, I think the ball game is definitely out of the picture at this point. And, um, you know, they're only four and four, uh, but uh, two games to see uh, with Sam Brown out, with Wimsat potentially out, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. Could they win at Michigan State and Maryland? Sure, they could. Uh, it's possible, but uh, definitely not confident at this point. And, um, you know, the, the only positive I can really say about this game is Adam Korzak just was amazing. Um, a 77-yard punt, I think a 63-yard punt. He won the Ray Guy Punter of the Week Award last week, and I think he had a better game today. So he's probably going to win it again or should. Um, you know, it's not a positive when you say the punter was the best part about the game, but uh, that's the reality. And, uh, hey, let's not not appreciate him because he only has a few games left. So I'm going to wrap it up now. Thanks for watching this video once again. I uh, have plenty of coverage on thescarletfaithful.com. Catch me on Twitter, Aaron underscore Brightman, uh, and uh, all over social media as well. We'll have uh, multiple podcasts this week. And uh, thanks so much for watching this video.